question is that this is a talk about breast cancer, but it's an optimistic talk, it's a hopeful, hopeful talk, and Dr. Day's quote could be an alternate title for this. In the next five minutes, you'll learn about the you did what way of dealing with breast cancer. It's a very different viewpoint. It's uh, an exhilarating view of the future of cancer treatment, in our opinion. Um, and it's a good antidote to the Breast Cancer Awareness Month pink washing that's coming your way soon. Brace yourselves. So, the Bart Simpson slide on credentials. Who the hell am I? Who cares? The current system is chock full of people with credentials and credential treatments and credential science, and it's not working. We can do so much better, and I'm going to talk about that tonight. Okay, so no, really, who the hell are you? Uh, two years ago, I stood on this stage and I gave a talk about the healthcare system in America. And I mentioned that my wife and I were about to write a book about her breast cancer experience in 2002. And we wrote it, and that's the book, and it's a happy story, and I'm going to tell you about it. <clears throat> so, two weeks before our first child was to be born, Holly was diagnosed with a pretty aggressive breast cancer. And that wasn't the worst part of the story. That wasn't the thickest part of the plot, so to speak. If you haven't seen the documentary uh, Cut... Poison Burn, I highly recommend it. The subtitle is, In the War on Cancer, the Disease is Only Half the Battle, and that is so true. Holly's doctors wanted to do all of this and more to her for up to five years of conventional treatments. And then an amazing thing happened. After about two months of solid research, she said no. She said no to all of those treatments, and she chose an integrative medicine protocol, and it's nine years later, and she's the picture of health. She's here tonight, you can see for yourself. Not only is the cancer gone, yes, thank you, but all of those other maladies are gone as well. So how do you explain this? How can you say no to these treatments and do well, even better than before? It doesn't make sense. It's a simple answer, really. War is hell, and the war on cancer is hell, and we need to stop this. It's not working very well. <coughs> Uh, here's the problem. Dr. Susan Love, she's the leading expert on conventional breast cancer. She tells us that many of, most in fact, would do well even if they didn't get the treatments, but they get them anyway. Another uh, leading cancer researcher there, the second quote, 80% of the treatments aren't working. This isn't making sense. So which breast cancer group are you in? If you're treated for breast cancer, you're in one of these three groups. You either didn't need the treatments, they're only going to make your cancer work, or you're cured, but you're cured at a very high price, a lot of toxicity. So. There's a better way. In our opinion, it's time to declare peace on cancer. And I'm going to read from our book for just a minute now because we feel very strongly about this and we've worked on this language. The notion of cancer as some foreign invader forms the very foundation of our problems in dealing with it. It gives rise to the practice of waging war against it and justifies the use of the weapons of mass destruction that are conventional treatments. And worst of all, it blinds us to the fact that it's part of us, a product of our biologies and our bio bodies and our environments a natural process even. Thus, rather than addressing the underlying imbalances that cause our cancers with the body and its amazing immune system as the most powerful tools at our disposal, we instead sacrifice our bodies as collateral damage in a cancer jihad. Can I get a witness? <laughs> I'm here to tell you there's a better way, but how do you do this? How do you declare peace on cancer? One of our favorite integrative oncologists uh, said, said it very eloquently. We look for the seeds of cancer, but we don't know anything about the soil. And integrative medicine treats the soil, and that's how you cure cancer versus merely eradicating it. Conventional medicine would tell you that you can only choose from the bad options on the left. Treatments that don't work uh, are only going to make you sicker or that uh, cure you at a very high price. There's another option, which is integrative medicine, and it's tending to the soil, and that's what Holly did. <clears throat> Some details. The book has a lot more, but uh, details of Holly's treatment... Herbal medicine, herbs heal, nutritional science is the foundation of all cancer treatment. Hippocrates said, uh, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. You also have to deal with uh, stress, sweat every day. And there's a lot more details about Holly's treatment in the book. In our opinion, th this is smarter, safer medicine for cancer. It's much more hopeful, it's much less grim. It was all of these things when conventional medicine was none of them. And it left Holly feeling future-proof. She's no longer fe fearful of cancer, and that's extraordinary. There are some times when the conventional treatments are excellent. And if I could recommend one book, it's not mine, it's this book by Dr. Ralph Moss. It's about chemo sensitivity testing. And the gist is, don't guess if your chemo is going to work. Make sure it's going to work before you do that. Uh, Dr. Weil and a lot of people are saying this kind of thing. A hundred years from now, we're going to look back on this and say, what were we thinking? This doesn't make any sense. This is grim. This is war. And we say, don't wait. You can get well again and you don't have to get sicker first in order to do so. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation with us, look us up in these places. Um, Holly and I wish you all the wellness you can possibly achieve, and thanks so much for listening. <laughs>